and then we're gonna say there's the 100 and then this is back to just normal withholdings or standard deduction of a single individual that's not over uh, the age limit to boost it up. There's the 8750, so 80, 8850. And so because I have a thousand in the distribution, 1000 in the distribution, 101, 12950, 8850. Okay, so then if I go to page two, calculates the tax 14994. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna do that 14994. And then uh, we also have this hundred dollars of other taxes. So it's, and it's coming from schedule two, as you can see. So schedule two, we've got the hundred thousand uh, of additional taxes. So if I was to add like a schedule two here, uh, so let's add that. I'll say schedule two is additional taxes. So we'll deal with that uh, later. Or let's just pull it in here. I have other taxes uh, here. So let's pull it in from this tab that I started. And then, so we had self-employment and let's say that we call this, what, what are we going to call it? We're going to call it, uh, we're going to call it additional tax on IRA. So added, added tax on IRA, which might make it save a little bit of room, added tax on the IRA and let's make it black and white. So I'll make it black and white. We shouldn't need much space down below because we shouldn't have that happening all the time. So I'll just have a couple fields for it maybe to make it blue and bordered and then IRA one or whatever the IRA is. And, and you could calculate it. The added tax is usually gonna be equal to the IRA distribution, which was 1000 times 10%, point 0.1 times 10%, point 0.1. So, uh, so 10, hold on a second. K pos, oh, this 1000 times 0 0.1, 100. And then we'll have total, total added tax on IRA equals the sum of those two. And then this totals it up down below. So that should pull into page one of the added tax, bringing us to 1594. So 1594, if I go to the 1040 page two, just to double check this, 1594, and then we paid 15,000. So that gets us down to the, to the 94. So that's the general idea of this amount due this time. So that's what you don't wanna see happen. A uh, hundred dollars doesn't look too bad, but obviously you can see that can start get quite big, quite quickly if someone just pulled out their, their entire IRA or similarly, if they pulled their entire 401k and just say, ah, just give me the 401k if I'm switching jobs or something, because then you're gonna get hit with a, a big penalty because that could be quite substantial uh, in dollar amount that could be in the 401k. So be careful of that. Now, what you could do to not have that happen is roll it over. So I'm gonna say, I don't wanna see a, a one there. I wanna see a G there. And that's going to indicate that it's a that it's a rollover of some kind. So so you're hoping when you go to another or uh, financial institution to have your investments in, you don't want to pull your money out and then put them. Uh, you know, well, you you might be able to structure it that but that way, but you would like to make sure that you structure it in some type of way that it's going to qualify for a rollover. And oftentimes you might want to go to the new financial institution and say, hey, look. I'm rolling my money over from whatever it was before, Vanguard or E-Trade or whatever, and I'm putting it in here. I want you to structure that as a rollover under whatever kind of retirement account will fit because it's currently under an, an IRA or something. And usually the financial institutions wanting to have your business will be able to help you facilitate that. And they're quite, quite uh, kind in doing so because you know they want your money in their place instead of the other place. So just make sure to do that. Otherwise you get hit with penalty and that would be bad. So now you got the same 100,000. Now though, it's calculated as a rollover. Now note that when you do that, some people, uh, well actually now it, it's not gonna be taxable at all. So now I'm gonna go back on over and say, there's nothing here. So we're gonna say, now there would be something in box one possibly, but not box uh, 2A because it's saying, hey, look, there was kind of like a distribution 
meaning it came out of one account that's under the umbrella of an IRA, but it went into another one, therefore it's not a taxable event. And that's what you'd like to be able to see. Why isn't it? Because of the description code that's gonna be down here, which calculated it as a rollover, which is usually the most common format of it not being taxable. So uh, it, so if someone needs the money, notice that in like this, this whole like uh, emergency thing, when, when the government told people that they couldn't go to work or anything because of social distancing with the whole COVID thing, that caused financial emergencies to many people. And many people can come up with financial emergencies for whatever reason, right? They need the money, they have the money, it's in their IRA or under their IRA or 401k plan, but they can't take it out because if they take it out, they get hit with a penalty. So in those kinds of situations, you wanna, you wanna see, okay, is there any kind of situation where I can have it, have it like this, where I can pull the money out in some way and have some rationale, which would be box represented by these codes that would allow me to take the money out, right? <laughs> Without getting hit with a penalty. You're still gonna have, if you were to take the money out and not have it rolled over, then you still might have to pay taxes on it. So let's say you took the money out and the government said, well, now it's a qualified uh, way. You took it out because of an emergency. Well, then they're just not going to hit you with the tax. Uh, taxes! <laughs> taxes! Uh, I mean, the, the added tax penalty. But they're still going to make you pay the taxes on it because because uh, you got, you, you got the, the benefit when you put the money in for it. In this case, you're not actually really taking it out. You're just rolling it over. But if you did take it out, and you had a qualified reason for taking it out, then it's likely it would still be recorded as income, but you wouldn't be hit with that 10% penalty. So a lot of times people get confused between the fact that it's recorded as income and the fact that you're getting hit with a 10% penalty. If you're actually taking the money out and not rolling it over, even if it's a qualified distribution, usually because you're in retirement age or possibly because there's some other ex like reason for taking it out early, then then you're still going to have to record it as income most likely you're just not going to get hit with the 10 percent penalty in that case that's the general rule so now we're saying it's over here as an ira distribution but none of it's some taxable amount and they give you the the code up here which is basically saying it's a rollover so now we're telling the irs look this matches what's on the the form so but it's a but it's a rollover so then it wouldn't be included in income so those are the general uh, rules. Just remember that if you're dealing with someone that's that's in retirement, it's likely that you're going to see a lot more of this kind of activity. And it's likely that you're going to have to do a little bit more complex work, possibly with managing the withholdings through the, 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 the distributions from IRAs and pensions and whatnot, or possibly calculating estimated tax payments. Whereas if the W-2 wages usually Obviously, the withholdings are calculated up top with the with, with the with the withholdings, and then on the input side, when you're putting money into the retirement plans, which we'll talk more about later, because right now we're talking about we're talking about the income side of things. When we're talking about the the putting money into an IRA, it's kind of like a deduction in some ways, right? It's an above the line deduction or a removing of the amount from income that would be reflected on the w-2 form so then you're going to get a tax benefit when you put the money in so when you put the money in you basically get a tax benefit which is kind of like an, a, a deduction or the equivalent being a reduction of the taxable income and then when you take the money out you're going to get hit with the tax because it's just a deferral and if the, you don't take it out because you're in retirement and you have no other reason to take it out you could also get hit with a penalty also just want to point out that the only reason you put the money into an ira account or or a 401k is not because it's some special magical investment that the government made up right the government's not good at making up investment tools the government is just good at not hitting you when you put your money somewhere so they're going to say i'm not going to hit you <laughs> with, with with taxes if you put your if you put your money under this investment tool that was made up by financial investors, just smart people, not the government, right? And then it's up, but it's under the umbrella of of an IRA or whatnot to have a, a tax shelter. So the government doesn't hit you when you put your money there. They're going to hit you when you take the money out. It's the general rule. So in other words, most IRAs, 401k plans are using the same investment tools that you would use, even if the government wasn't incentivizing putting money into these types of accounts, which would be mutual funds typically 
uh, stocks and bonds and whatnot. 